So um, this ain't gonna be like no interview. No, because I'm rubbish at interviewing. So don't don't even think it's anything like that. It's literally just just chatting. Yeah. Um. So yeah, yo, Counter Attack podcast with myself, Daps. Um, Lamb is not here. Spence ain't here. There's normally three of us. Um. So me riding solo today. Got a special guest f- um for you today. Oh wait, before that, guys, keep liking, subscribing, sharing, all of that good stuff. Um. The feedback from the last one with Jamal Campbell Ras was good. You know Jamal? Played against him, I know, yeah. Played against him. Rapid. Was he rapid? Quick, yeah. yeah. When I play him, he's at MK Dons. Yeah. yeah he's rapid. Yeah, but we've got um, a special guest. Um, Bradley Johnson, everybody. How you doing? Yeah, so there's no big round of applause here. Just, <laughs> it's just it's just us. But yeah, man, how are you doing today, man? Yeah, I'm good. All good. Excited to, to be here, really. And get this done. You're not really excited, no, are you? No, I am, man. I am. <laughs> when you said, come on, I was, and I've obviously looked at the Instagram and seen a few interviews and all that, you've done some good stuff. Yeah, man. We try. We try. But it's funny. Um, met you at the Blacklist. Yep. Um, and I didn't even recognise you. Yeah, I remember you saying that. You I didn't even recognise you. I was like, who, who, like, Everyone says that. Everyone says I look big on TV, man. I don't know what it is. TV... People say TV put a stone on you, innit? So I must look. No, but it's not even like you actually. You, you genuinely look, look younger. Younger, I'll take yeah. that. Yeah, I'll take that. I think it's the shaven hair, innit? Yeah, no, you genuinely look, and you look. Well, you look like you're you're trimmer as well, man. Yeah, I've, I've always, I always have been, but get that perception no. of being a big heavy midfielder. But no, I've I've always been pretty pretty lean myself. It's funny though, because when I saw your your latest post, well, I don't know if it's your latest anymore, when um, you were celebrating before he's hit it in the back of the net. Yeah, that, this you, weekend. Yeah, yeah, just gone. Yeah, man. You looked a bit. You looked a bit big there as well. I'm like, this ain't the same guy. No, I was, man. I was playing against a little eight-year-old, isn't it? <laughs> a little eight-year-old, really, so it was a little twig. So I looked looked bigger next to him. As the season going for you, you're you're at Blackburn. Yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, Blackburn now. Um, going well. Um, we started very well. Um, myself personally started very well. It was obviously a new club for me. I, mm. I signed for them in the summer. Um, started well. Um, as things go in, in football, you find yourself in and out of the team. I find myself out of the team. Mm, yeah, I noticed. And the team started doing well. So it's one mm. of the things that you just got to sit back and, and wait for your time to, to get back in the team. Um, we're on a good run now, I think nine unbeaten. And, um, you know, Christmas period is the busiest period of our season. Mm. We've got a lot of games. We played two games in the week just gone. And uh, I got back in the team on Saturday. And, yeah. And... Hopefully, I've I've stepped my claim now to get back in the team. That's what I wanted to do. So, yeah, you're um, as a 32 year old now. You're 32, right? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, you're used to week in, week out. How hard is it to be on the bench for for those games? <laughs> you know what? It is the older you get, the the more you understand it. Mm. Um, I think in in my 20s, if I was on the bench, I would be I would have been fuming. I, I'm still yeah, yeah, frustrated yeah. that I want to play every game, but I understand it now that. The demands of, especially this league, the championship, the championships, the hardest league I've, I've played in by far. It's just because even though you've been in prem, yeah, yeah, by far, it's just the, the demand on your mm. body. It takes you know you're playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, and it's not. There's no never no easy game, but when you're in the Premier League, where I was at Norwich, yeah, like I'm not sad. Norwich ain't a big club, was a, a good club, one of the best clubs I played for, but. We're going to man you away, and no one's expecting us to win. Yeah. I mean, how I see it, I've always said that the Premier League split in two leagues. Mm. So you've got the top ten, and then anyone below that can beat anyone, and then it's a dogfight from yeah. there, from ten downwards. So in the Premier League, you play Saturday to Saturday. You never have no midweek game, so you have a hard game Saturday. You got a six days to recover from that game. Yeah. But in the Championship, you've got no easy games for a start. I've been at the top end of the championship for my whole career, um, fighting for promotion. I've been lucky enough to win promotion a few times, but you're always, where I've always been at the top end, you're always expected to win. Yeah. So you're going into games thinking the crowd are coming there, everyone else is thinking, I've been at Derby, so everyone's thinking, oh, we're going to win. But it don't turn out like that. You can play the bottom of the league team, they're up for the game, Mm. they're looking at you as a big scout. You know, you bring your, Derby was a big club, they bring a lot of fans to there. Um, home ground, fill it out. So it's a big game for them and everyone raises their game. And yeah. that's the thing in the championship, you can never predict what's going to happen. As yeah. I said, the top teams lose to the bottom teams. Whereas in the Premier League, if a 
if a top if a top team lose to a a bottom team, they're it's not going to go shock. and do it again and yeah. again. Do you know what I mean? It's it's not lucky because you know football's football. You know, if you play good on, on one day and, and the other team have an off day, you can beat them. But in this championship, it's just demanding physically and mentally as well. Mm. Is there a reason why you always play for teams outside of London? Um, because I was saying to you, obviously, that I thought you were from up north. Yeah, no, a lot of people do say that. No, I'm, you're from East London. Right? Yeah, from East London. I grew up in, in Hackney and I was raised in Leighton. Um, no, from when I was, I was always, at, I, was at, I started at Arsenal as well yeah. um, from 10. I started football late, um, got into football when I was about 10. Um, was there till I was 15 and got released and um, tried to go for trials through... Charlton and Watford, but at 15, 14, 15, I think I got released that. They've already got their players yeah. who they, they signed up, so it was hard for me to get into a team. And then um, I end up, no one's really, I've never really said this story, this first time I say it on this, on this podcast, but I got released from there and then fell out of love of football, really. I was heartbroken. At 15, I remember, the, I remember the phone call to this day. I was in my front room at home and got the phone call. My dad was on the phone and, you know, when you can just tell by someone's expression because... Yeah. It was leading up to that week where everyone was speaking, oh, have you been told, have, have you got a contract yet or, mm. or not? So I knew what the phone call was and I could just tell from my dad's face that it weren't good news. Yeah. So he got off the phone to Liam Brady and um, <clears throat> they told him that they're not going to give me a contract and I was heartbroken. So, uh, do you support Arsenal though? Yeah, I support Arsenal, still do, yeah, unfortunately. But um, no, but I got told then and as I said, I was heartbroken. Um, tried to go to other clubs after that and I said, got rejected there and sort of fell out of love of football for mm. about, say, about 18 months. Is that where yeah. you went? Did you go to Cambridge? Yeah, so before, was so Forest, I got released when I was 14, 14 straight 15, and then I went to Cambridge when I was 17. So in that gap, mm. I went back to my Sunday league team, Yeah, uh, which was in the wood. Um, went back there and, and the thing there as well is when I got released from Arsenal, everyone was when I went back to the Sunday league team, everyone mm. was expecting me to be this. World beer. Yeah. yeah. And I found it hard. Mm. Like when I was 15, before when anyone knows me, I was tiny. Yeah. I was a skinny little rake. <laughs> and um, that's one of the reasons I got released from Arsenal. They said I was too small. Mm. So I went back to my Sunday league team, found it hard there, which in my head, I thought, oh yeah, I'll find it easy. So I went back there. Everyone was expecting me to be this world beer. I wasn't, found it hard. And then that gave me another knockback in my confidence. And then, um, out of, out of football at that time, as I said, I fell out of love with it. Just went on the wrong, not, not, not the wrong path, but yeah. got kicked out of school at, at that time as well. So I was in no man's land. I was just hanging around with my mates on the street, as, mm. as you do, like growing up in, in East London. I was hanging around with my mates and I just was more interested in going out with my mates than I was football. Yeah. So football got put on a back burner for a bit. I went to college, went to Warren Forest College, done a sports science degree there. I was only there for a year. And then come to like 16. But at this time I was still at my Sunday league team. Yeah. But weren't taking it serious. I wasn't taking I was training once a week. Um if I could be bothered to go to training that is mm. sometimes I wouldn't even turn up for training. I'd be out with my mates, like hanging around and um going there and then come sixteen my dad said to me, like, what what are you gonna do? What do you want to do? So mm. I said to him, I don't know. He said, why don't you do an apprenticeship? So at 16, bearing in mind, I didn't didn't do no GCSEs at school or nothing. Yeah. So my dad was like, you need to get your ass in gear, basically, like do something, <laughs> get a trade under your belt or something, because yeah. all my family are trained. My, my, my dad was a roofer for 40 odd years. My brothers yeah. worked for BT. So I'd done an apprenticeship in um, carpentry. So I went to Deptford College. Flipping over. That yeah, ends. I went, yeah, yeah, I went to Deptford College. I was there for, I was there for about seven months mm. and um, started a carpentry apprenticeship there. So I was we was going to college three times a week. So I was getting a DLR every morning from from Leighton. This was yeah. getting a DLR all the way to Deptford Bridge, going there three times a week. And then the other two, you had to go to the job centre and look for a job. Yeah. So I think there was only two of there's about fifteen on the course. There's only me and this one other boy. I'll never forget who didn't couldn't find a job. Yeah. So all the others were working and coming to college. You were uh, just working. Couldn't find a job. I weren't, couldn't find a job. So the other two days. That we weren't at college, we had to go to Greenwich to go to the job centre, phone up, uh, try and get jobs everywhere yeah. and like say, I'm doing apprenticeship carpentry, have you got any work for me and stuff? And it didn't work out. And then um, 
but this time as well, I was still hanging around with my mates mm. uh, back home in Leighton and just doing as any kid does around there, just hanging around in the streets. And, and I won't say I got involved in anything bad. It was just hanging around with my mates, enjoying myself. Like, just, yeah. So at what point did you end up like playing football again? It was so that time I left in with then and then. Um, as I said there, I was more concentrated on my friends and stuff and then got involved, um, not in, in, in a gang or anything. I just, back then, I'm talking, f I'm older than 32, this was when I was 16, so 15, 16 yeah. years ago now. There weren't no gangs, then. it was just kids from estates. Yeah, I grew yeah, up on yeah. the estate and you know what it's like, it's mm. all this uh, postcode war and stuff like that. It was, I just got caught in the wrong time at the wrong place. And It's so weird hearing you fully London-y. <laughs> it's so, it's so no, weird. I just got caught in a... In a wrong time, wrong place. And obviously growing up in, in Leighton, I went to school, I went to Kelmscott school, got kicked out of there. Everyone knew that I played for Arsenal then, so everyone knew around Leighton that I was yeah. a footballer and I was meant to be the next best thing, but it didn't work out that way. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, got caught up in this turf, turf war, whatever they call it now, but it weren't no, no gangs or anything. It was just mates hanging around from our estate and then the other estate to come out and then I got stabbed in my legs. You got stabbed in your legs? Yeah, I got stabbed when I was 15, 16. Yeah, 16, I got stabbed in my leg. And that's only because I was obviously from on, on my estate and and getting caught up in just obviously everyone knew who I was around the area. Do people know this? No, not many people do. Obviously, my close friends and family do. I um, So, yeah, that happened when I was 16. Uh, mm. I got stabbed. And then at that time, I was at Wolven Forest. Yeah. Um, they done Wolven Forest joined up with... Um, College, Bark and Abbey College, they joined mm -hmm. up with, and then they done like a same thing, a an apprenticeship for mm -hmm. football. So the kids were going Bark and Abbey College five days a week, training there, and then playing for Wolverham Forest on the yeah. weekend. So they joined up there, and I'll never forget the coach at the time when Interwood got to under 15s, that's when they joined up with Bark and Abbey. And the coach there, Dave Muir, said to me, He wants me to come along. Mm -hmm. He said, I can't get you to the college because you ain't got no grades or nothing. Yeah. And I said, Yeah, that's no problem. He said, But the boys, they train on a Tuesday evening and a Thursday evening and you can come to that. Mm. So again, when I could be bothered and when my heart was in there, I was going training with them on a Thursday and a, and a, and a Tuesday and playing in the under 18s for them on a Saturday. Mm. So I was doing this. So while they was going to the college doing football, I was obviously doing my apprenticeship in, in Deptford and then on the weekends playing for Wolverham Forest. And then- um, That we got picked up. Yeah, so then obviously that happened with me when I, when I got stabbed. And then after that, that Dave Muir, who the, who the guy was, um, he said to my dad, look, like, and my dad said to him, like, look, can you help? Yeah. Like, he's, he's getting involved in stuff he shouldn't be and mm. stuff like that. And is there anything you can do to for it, for, like, for help him? But at that time, I was just breaking into the first team there as well at mm. Wolverham Forest. And there was in the Ryman Prem, I think they were. Yeah, yeah. I played one or two games. And uh, Dave just said to me, look, when he's back fit, um, bring him along, like get his head screwed down and, and I've got a few contacts. I can send him on trial somewhere. So uh, yeah, after that happened to me, it, it woke me up really. Mm -hmm. um, I had a talent and I was throwing it down a drain really. Yeah. And um, so after that, I think I was out for about two months. I had to operation my legs and stuff. And um, when I got back fit, I went back to Woman Forest, trained. And I think within the first month, uh, Dave Muir phoned my dad and said, "I've got a trial for him at Cambridge. Yeah, does he want to go?" And it weren't a, it weren't a quick it weren't a question of my dad was going to answer yes or no. I had no choice. Yeah. yeah. So my dad <laughs> said, "Yeah, he's going." Yeah. So um, got fit, played a few games at Warren Forest, and I went to Cambridge for a week. Me and another another boy, Nick, I think his name was, he sent us up there for a week, and um, went up there with him. My dad took me up there, trained with them for a week. This was youth team level. Trained with the youth team for a week. Were well, you doing that every day? No, they put me up in digs, oh, okay, so we stayed up there. So my dad took me up there. We went there for a week at first, so they put us in the digs for a week. And then we trained with them for a week, played one game at the end of the week. And then my dad come up and then they invited me back. They said that the guy there, Ricky Duncan, who was a coach at the time, said, oh, we want to uh, have another look at him. Like, mm. So we want him to spend longer. Can can he come up next week? And again, it wasn't, yeah. uh, it wasn't a question. My You're dad going. was like, yeah, no You're problem. Going. Fine, when do you want him here? I'll, I'll, mm. I'll bring him up. So I went up there again for another week. And then spent the week there again, got my head down, done well. And um, 
<clears throat> come the end of the week, Ricky Duncan was like, look, we want him, mm. but we can't offer him a contract. We can give him a non-contract. It's called non-contract. I remember those days. Yeah, yeah we'll give him a non-contract, but we can put him in digs, um, mm. feed him, and we can give you expenses for bringing him up from London. Mm. To And my dad was like, you're doing it. Yeah. So, by that point, like, I wanted to do it because what, obviously what happened to me and it, like, as I said before, it was a wake up call for me. The thing is, sorry to cut you, the thing is, it says one game for Cambridge. Yeah. Before you went to Northampton. Northampton. Yeah. Yeah. So, I was there for, so I signed there, non contract, went there, lived in the house. It was crazy. Lived in the house with 22 of us, the whole youth team, first mm. years, second years and third years and two pros were in one big house in Cambridge. So I went there for six months and weren't getting paid. I was on a non-contract, so I was just living there. They were giving my dad uh, £50 a week for expenses, which yeah. my dad was taking, obviously, and uh, giving me uh, f- f- giving me like £20 or £30 a week to, to get some food if mm. I needed, but I didn't really need yeah. food because I was getting fed. But I was there for six months and... Within that six months, obviously I was in the youth team. There was a French manager there, Hervé, Hervé Renard, his name is, and he liked me. Mm. So I trained with the first team a few times and then I was on the bench a few times. I remember I went to the FA Cup, was Halifax away and I thought I was going to play. Mm. So I was buzzing, all my family come up and uh, didn't get on. But then I made one substitute appearance yeah. for Cambridge towards the end of the season. I remember it was against Scunthorpe at, at home at the Abbey Stadium, Cambridge Stadium. And um, yeah, made one appearance. And then Cambridge got relegated that year. Mm. They wanted to keep me, but they couldn't offer me anything until they knew where they were in the next season. Because I think the manager was leaving and, and the club, obviously, yeah. what happens with clubs when they get relegated, they have to sort out stuff, what they're going to do next year. So at the end of that season, I think it was like, three weeks before the end of the season, the youth team coach, Ricky Duncan, he might get in trouble for this, but he come up to me and said, look, South End want you. Because yeah. we played South End in the youth team mm. at their place um, and their manager, Colin Calderwood at the time was watching mm. and he wants, no, not Colin Calderwood, sorry. That's, um, a, that's the Tottenham one, isn't it? Oh, uh, what was the South End manager's name? Yeah, it'll come to me, St- not Stimson. Tim Timson or something. Well, anyway, he was there watching, and he said he wants uh, me to come down and have a have a um, a look at me. So, mm. the youth team coach at the time said, "Look, I'll say to everyone that you're ill, yeah, and you can go down to South End for a week." But then at the same time, Northampton, Colin Calder with Northampton, phoned me up and said they want to have a look at me. So then it come to the youth team manager saying to me, "Look, say you're ill for two weeks, one week go down to South End, have a trial there, let them." say what they want to say and then yeah. go to Northampton so I was like yeah no problem I'll, I'll do that and um, so I've done that went down to South End for one week um, went to Northampton for one week and then come back to Cambridge and then was waiting for like the call to see what they was offering me so then um, mm. I remember they, they both wanted me they both offered me uh, contracts and um, South End offered me a contract two year professional contract but I'd have to live at home yeah. Northampton offered me a two year contract. Um and, and at this time it weren't about the money or anything, it was just getting in, but Northampton offered me a two year contract, less money than what South End, South End have offered me. Yeah. But they gave me a flat. So I'd be living up in Northampton. Yeah, yeah. And again, no, my really. dad said, You're going yeah. up to Northampton. So that's that's Definitely it really. That's started. yeah, that's why I've been out of London for so long. So that happened when I was eighteen. So I went to Northampton, yeah, from when, from when I was 18. Yeah, because it's even mad that you're even only 32. Because I remember seeing you play for Leeds, Norwich. I just always used to thought you were one of the senior people on the team. Yeah, no, I, went, yeah, I started young. So when I was at Northampton, broke into the first team when I was 19, went out on loan. I went to Gravesend, North Fleet on loan for yeah, six that. months. Then I went to Stevenage for a month. And then... What was it like at Leeds, though, for you? Leeds, unbelievable. How did that move come about? It was coming up to the January. I played all that season. So I was out on loan at Northampton. I was out on loan to Stevenage. Then the manager at Northampton, John Gorman, at the time, got sacked. Mm. So I come back. My loan finished. I was only there for a month. So my loan finished. I'll come back to Northampton. Stevenage wanted to buy me. Mm. 
So then the new manager come in, Stuart Gray, and he was like, well, if this club want to buy our player, mm. like he must be good, so let me have a look at him. <laughs> so he said to me, look, I want to have a look at you. Like if a team wants to buy you, like, they, and they wanted to buy me badly, like I've done well at Stevenage, and that was the manager, Mark Stimson, he, he wanted to buy me. So um, he said, I want to have a look at you. So mm. again, Monday, I weren't on trial, but I felt like I was on trial. Yeah. I had another year there. So I went in on Monday, trained all that week, and then uh, Stuart Gray came up to me and said, you're not going nowhere, you're starting for me tomorrow. This was on the Friday. I was like, wow, like really? Yeah. So I've been out on loan and I've just come back thinking, oh, I'm going to have to go out on loan again mm. somewhere. And he just said, no, look, you're not going nowhere, you're playing for me Saturday. And I remember it was Tranmere away we played, done well, and under Stuart Gray for the next four months. So that was just at the beginning of the season. I played every single game underneath him. And then January come, and I think the club needed... The money, money. Mm. so yeah, Leeds come in for me. I think Leeds, Leicester, and what league were Leeds in that time? League One, yeah, it must have been. So Leicester come in for me. I went and spoke to them, looked at their training ground. Coventry were uh, interested as well, and then Leeds come in last minute. I think Leeds come in, and um, as soon as I went up to their training ground and looked at the training ground, and, and obviously Dennis Wise was the manager as, yeah. as well, being a London boy, he sold the club to me, but he didn't even have to. As soon as I drove up, uh, four parts of training ground. It was, Especially because like they were obviously prem, so the size of that club compared to other oh, yeah. clubs in in that in that league. Yeah, and and for me, from where I've come from, Cambridge to Northampton, not then they're small club, but yeah. they are small compared to Leeds United. Mm. Like, as you just touched on there, been in the prem for a year, played Champions League. Mm. When I went into that training ground, I was gobsmacked. Like, the training ground still to this day is it's, it's a Premier League club, and I've always said that about yeah. Leeds. I've not been there now for left there nine years ago and I've always said that club needs to be in the Premier League. It's a Premier League club, everything. Would you, so go, would you, go, back facilities. Would you go back to Leeds? I'd love to play for Leeds in the Premier League. Love to, in a massive club. <laughs> As I see your words there. I'd love to, in the Premier League. <laughs> in the no. Premier League. No, but I, I, I feel this is their season now, you know, this is the, they come close last year and mm. I was on the team that beat them in the yeah. semi-final, which was a surreal moment for me going back to Ella Road in such a big game. I'm usually used to playing for them in, in the big mm. games, what going back there and, and being in but no, they've got a good manager now. And, and you know, it was one of them things when I left there, cause I don't know if you know, when I left there, it was I left, not on bad terms with the fans. Mm. The fans wanted me to stay and I wanted to stay. It was, it was the chairman at the time, Ken so. Bates. And um, what's he like though? Because there are some things that I hear about, about him that a lot of people don't really. He, he, he never lived in the country. Really? No, nah, he was in Monaco for, oh, okay. I don't know, people say for tax reasons yeah. or whatever. So he was never at the club. He, he'd come in now and again, um, but he was he was just old school, mm. like, like old school, like yeah. very, I won't say bully boyish, but had that about him. Like mm. if, if if it weren't his way, it was it was no way. So but, what what was it that happened that you lot just didn't see eye to eye? No, I was, I was coming to the, to the end of my contracts and... Uh, and even at, at Leeds, I had to go out on loan as well. And a few managers have went out on loan, come back, um, played well, played in the season that we got promoted. The season before that, I, I, I got in the... Um, no, I got in the, uh, the team that got to the final. And then after that, went out on loan, come back, and then got promoted. And it was in the championship, played every game then. And I was coming to the end of my contract and I felt that... At that time, we were signing big players, you know, we, they were going for it, signing players and and bringing them in on a lot more money than what I was on and, and stuff. Like, I just wanted to be, basically, have a good contract like the others were. Like, I was playing every single week, you know, we were getting players in on loan, buying players, and they were sitting on the bench while I was playing. And I just wanted to feel loved and feel wor worth at the club. Yeah. I wasn't asking for, for stupid amounts because... I knew where I'd come from, you know, I'd come from League Two to League One and then got in a championship there. And I was coming to the end of my contract and just it was just one of the things they they offered me a contract but it wasn't nowhere near as what others others were on. I just wanted to pay my worth. I played every single game for them. And then um it come to a stage where he said, Oh, if you don't sign this, you get on a transfer list. And then I was like, Well, like I know my worth. Like yeah. I believe in myself. I believe in my ability, and I think you're shortchanging me. So I said, 
if if you're going to be like that, then I know, I believe that I can go. I, I, at that time, I did believe I, I was a premiership player. But at, at this time as well, do you already have in your head, okay, I could go here, I could go there and get this and get that? Yeah, yeah. I, oh, knew, so, so I, knew. I believed that I could play in the Premier League mm. at that time. Um, there weren't clubs interested in me at the time, but I yeah. had that belief in myself that like, I've come from League 2, worked hard, got into League 1, mm. went there in League 1, got them out of League 1, went in the Championship, and I thought every time I've stepped up, yeah. I've been able, able able to handle it. And then I only played one one year in the Championship then, and I felt that... Light work. Yeah, not light work, but I felt <laughs> I, I, was, I, I didn't feel out of my depth. Yeah. And I felt... And, and at that time, when I was at Leeds, we had a great, unbelievable cup run. We always used to draw big teams in the cup. We played Tottenham, we played uh, Liverpool, played Man United, beat them at Old Trafford. Mm. One of the... One of the best days of my career that was but playing against Premier League opposition, I felt that I could do it so I always believed what was the score that, that one nil. was it one nil would beat him yeah Beckford, Beckford, scores, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember yeah. That. so I always believed that but I could hold my own mm. so I, I believed in myself I didn't have clubs asking for my, for my signature or anything or saying I'll come here and come there I just believed in myself that I could go there and then the way it felt there is that I was coming to the end of my contract I was 24 at that time there was no Bosman rule where you could uh, the club had to pay compensation for you yeah. so I could walk out for free. So I sat there with my agent and, and my dad and stuff and my agent believed in me as well. He said, oh, look, like, this deal, is, it's not right. You you should be getting paid what the others are getting paid, who they're bringing in and who you're making sit on the bench and watching you like you're you're a good player. And I felt, yeah, so come to an end where he come out one day, I think we played Crystal Palace at home and he come out and said, oh, we've offered Bradley... An un- un- unbelievable contract, um, way higher than what he's on here now, and he's he's all bullshit. He said, like, like, Bates. Bates said that in mm. his program notes. This is before the game, but and, and at that time, to be fair, the manager I was I got a lot of respect for, and I still, still speak to him now, Simon Grayson. And he said, "Look, I want you here." Now I, I was saying to that Simon Grayson, "I want to stay here. Like, mm. can you help me out?" And even him, he was having trouble um, speaking with Ken Bates. Yeah. Like, so he was going to him and asking him. Like give Bradley a contract and he was like, nope, nope, we weren't interested at all. And even at that time in, in January in the championship, we I think we were we were up there, we were up at the top end. Mm. Our first year in the championship, we were up there. And I think we just needed three or four more players, like loan players or something, mm. to, to help us maintain that in the league. And they didn't give they didn't give him no funds or they didn't give him no players to go out and get him. Do you, um at the time when all this is happening? The Leeds player, I mean the Leeds fans, because obviously they're opening that, they're reading that. So that was yeah. So before that, they didn't know what was going on. Mm. It was only between me and mate. And then I was surprised when I come in on a Saturday mm. home game, and obviously you know in each program the chairman has their page, and then he said that, and all the lads were like, "Wow, look what you said!" And I was like, "Why is he saying that?" And I was thinking this was before a game, and I was playing. Yeah. Like, and that's what I was going to say about Simon Grayson. He said to me, "Look, no matter what happens, like that's you and your agent and the mm. chairman's. You're my player." I'm the I'm the manager. I'm going to pick the best team and do well. So you're going to play for me. But do you not? Because what tends to happen a lot of the time, players don't ever come out and actually say anything. No. So after that game, mm. so I remember the game. So obviously going out now. So I've read the program notes and I'm fuming before the game, and I'm thinking, oh shit, like he's killed me. Here. So yeah. I've gone out, warm up. The fans are booing me, and I'm like, oh no. And then. Played the game. I don't know what the score was, can't remember, but I come off. Yeah. And then when I come off, the whole stadium were booing me. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Ellen Rowe booing me, saying, singing, there's only one greedy bastard. And, stuff like that. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, he killed me. So then I've come in after the the, the game and I'm sitting there and the manager, like Simon Grace come up to me and said, don't listen to that, Ray, Ray. Mm. I brought you off because of this. Like, there's nothing, mm-hmm. like, you're going to be playing for me. Don't worry about it. And I was like, no, the chairman, he's like, killed me. So then come out of the stadium and then um, a reporter, a journalist asked me, like interviewed me and mm. he said, no, do you want to say your side? And I, and I just come out and said, yeah. I said look, it's, it's all crap. The chairman's going to say that, you know, trying to get his fans on his side. But at the end of this day, I'm, I'm still here. I'm a player for this club and I'm going to try my hardest for this club. Mm. And then I went on TalkSport, done an interview on TalkSport. And then... Um, it was that designed to... Was it like your agent was like, look, we need to get you as many Yeah, just to get my, just to yeah, get, get my, because mm. I was getting stick left, right and centre. Mm. Like, I was getting stick from, which rightly so, because if yeah, a chairman from a club mm. come out and says that, then the fans are going to believe him, do you know what I mean? Mm. So 
I come out and said my part, and then slowly but surely it all turned. But bearing in mind when this was happening, I was playing every week. Yeah, like the manager was still playing me. I was put. I, I was put on a transfer list. The chairman said to me, "I'm going to put you in transfer list if you if you don't sign this contract." And I was like, "No problem." Like, do it. I believe in myself that I'm worth more than that and I, I, I can go to a higher level. I want to stay here, but mm. if that's what you want to do, you want to put me in the transfer list. The manager's not saying he wants to put me in the transfer list. Yeah. The manager was still playing me. So I said, that's fair dues, you do what you want. And then I think it lasted, when I come out and said that, then a lot of people on talk sport were, were characterising him, saying, yeah, I know Ken Bates, he's a bully, this, bully, yeah. that. And then fans started up, like realising. And towards the end, fans was, I remember we played... Burnley away and fans were and I think I might have scored or, or played well and fans were singing from a month ago when they was booing me mm. and one green fans were singing sign him up sign him up sign him yeah, up yeah because so, that's that's my idea of, of Ken Bates from things that I've heard and it's not even just things in the media it's things from people that yeah. are in within football that he's just not a good good no player, it was right? just you get on with people and, and you don't in football and he's one of the chairmen that I ain't, I ain't got on with really and it was him who come public with it he didn't have to do that mm. And I, I had to defend myself, really, and I've done that. But towards the end of my time at Leeds, I think the the fans really understood that I wanted to be there because I could have easily just tossed it off and not played mm. because I knew I was leaving for free at the end of the season. I could easily just said, you know what, I'm just going to sit here, pick up my wages and, and just walk out and, and not put myself in the fire line of maybe getting injured or something. But I played every single game yeah. to the last game of the season, played it. And what was it like playing that Leeds team, though, man? Yeah, it was that, that was a good team. Oh, really good team. That was a good we team. We had some players there. Well, when, mm. I, when I first signed, we was in League One. Um, we had 15 points deducted, mm. and um, everyone was against us. And I think everyone, I don't know, Leeds has got that thing where everyone is against them. And mm. you know what? Playing in that team, when everyone's against you, you thrived on it. It, yeah. was, it was one of the things because you go to Ellen Road and um, home games in League One, we was getting 25,000 fans. The fan base at Leeds is mm. amazing. And um, like it was all like one big family. Everyone used to call us dirty leads and stuff. And yeah. like, I'm one of them players. I like to get involved. Trust me, and, we've seen and it. So I like a tackle. So I lived up to that reputation. And no, there was some good players there. When I first went there, we had Jermaine Bedford. Even Tor Andre Flo was there when I when I oh, first yeah. signed there. He was there. Um, Alan Who's, Thompson. I was at so it was there. Trezor Candle, the player, the striker. Um, Luciano Becchia. That's it. Yeah, he come. I think he come at the end of League One mm. and um, Championship. Yeah, we had some good players: Johnny Housen, Max Cradle, Robert Snodgrass. Yeah, we had some Fabian Delph was there when I was there. Some some, some good. When good did McAllister players. come in? So McAllister come in halfway. He come in after. Was he coming after Wise? Yeah, he come in after Wise because he sent me out alone. Mm. So I couldn't get in, didn't play in, in his team in yes. League One. In League One, that's when. Uh, Fab, yeah, Fab, Fabian Delph come in, couldn't get a game, so I went out on loan. Could you not get a game because of Delph? Yeah. Oh, okay. So he come towards the back end of the season, mm. Gary McAllister, and I played every game underneath him. Mm. We got to the playoff uh, final with him, played Doncaster, we lost 1-0. So I played all of them games underneath him. Then the beginning of the season, that's when Fab mm. come in. And then... Um, Could you tell, even though obviously he's keeping at the team, could you tell looking at looking at him that he was going to be he was different class he was I, was I played with a lot of youngsters now but at that time up until recently mm. he was the, the he's one of the best players that I've played with I played with him a few times when I come back off loan but mm. he was unbelievable he could do everything left right I remember he had he done his ligaments in his what is he I'd say, for me, I don't even know what foot he'd say he done his ligaments he's, he's, he's right footed, footed. Yeah. he done his ankle he's done his uh, ankle ligaments in his right foot so he couldn't kick a ball mm. So he's just like, oh, I'm going to practice on my left. And he just used his left in games. Like, mm -hmm. This is in games. He's, he's strong foot. He couldn't kick a ball with it because yeah. he was injured. And he was, he was using his left foot. He was just running past players like they weren't there. He was ch At 19, 18, he was winning games by himself. Like, it's crazy because you look at him now and obviously he's been moulded into more of a, like, not utility player. Yeah, but, uh, at Man City, he had to, yeah, he had to do that. Do you know what I mean? That, and but he had, he, to be fair to me, he left Leeds and he's had some bad injuries. Mm. He's done his knees twice. Yeah, he has. And um, I think he'd agree as well. Some of them were, were down to his own because he, some of the tackles he used to fly into, oh, crazy. Mm. I think someone told him, like someone said to him, if you carry on, you're going to injure yourself. And I think that's what he'd done. His first first knee injury was 
done it himself in a tackle. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he was flying in. For the, me and him used to smash each other in training. Like, in training? Good, yeah, in training. Oh, in training was crazy with him. We used to smash each other in training. But that was very rare for a young lad, that young, yeah, to come yeah. into the first team and do that. So, like, even the senior players, like... Now, if a, if a young lad come into the first team and started smashing around, nah. someone would say, like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, but back then, even the senior players couldn't say nothing to him. He'd be mm. like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, and, and that's what got him so far, because he had that attitude about him. Mm. Not attitude. No, no, had, no, no, no. Yeah, like, I, I hear what you're saying. Like he, that good arrogance yeah, about him. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, it was good, but he weren't cocky with it. Mm. He weren't overconfident. He believed in himself. And, boy, he he done well at Leeds. And, and as I said, when he broke into the first team... I couldn't get in, mm. so I went out on loan. And then by the time I'd come back, I think he was only there for like a month and then uh, Aston Villa bought Villa. And then I got back into the team. But you said up until recently he was um, the best youngster. Yeah. Who would you look at? Or well, Not to say this person might be better than... No, but is there anyone you look at now and think, no, this guy's just different? Yeah, I played of... with him last year. Mason Mount. Oh, Chelsea. Mount. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. He was... Frightening, but even to be fair, we were lucky to have the the players we had last year. I was last just about year to say that to you because obviously Lamp Lampard mm. being manager gets all the Chelsea players, but could you see the difference in, in quality from Mounty's first session? I think, and 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 I'm not just saying that because he's my friend and I still speak to him now. But any anyone at Derby at the time when he come in, you could just you could just tell straight away. You know, when mm. someone's so good, you can tell he's been. Not been at a high level because he hadn't at that time, but you could tell he could get there. Like, and his first session with us, he was, he's just done some stuff where you think, wow, like his finishing was a joke. Mm. He always wanted the ball. He was he could get out of tight places, and very rare for a, a young player to come into first team football and have that impression straight away because mm. normally they're they're shy and they don't want. To, but he come in and just got on with his business and and done and his you stuff. could tell with him he was going to be England's. Yeah, and and the thing about that is as well when. Nowadays, when young players know they're good, mm. they sort of, yeah. not fob it off, they yeah. ain't got that hung up, but he had everything. And all of them, uh, Fick, Tomori, he's gone back to Chelsea and playing mm. now. He was the same. I like, I love Tomori. Tomori. Yeah, That's what I asked him about. Tomori yeah. is, honestly, he could go He could go on to be one of the... Yeah, he could. One, and one of the, all, they all could. Harry Wilson as well, we had him from Liverpool. All the same. Like, it's very rare, as I just said before, it's very rare that you get loans like, I don't think anyone, any club in this country will get free loan signings as mm. better as Derby did last year. When he, um, at Old Trafford on Wilson, yeah. when he stepped up for that free kick, in your mind, did you think? He you know what? Us? We did, did it, that was the first time. We said, we knew he had that wobble. He had that wobble. Oh, he used to do it in training. It was frightening, mm. like wobble, but he'd never done it in a game. And that was the first free kick he had scored for Derby. Mm. And then ever since that, Every free kick we got after that, yeah. it was like, go, go. Like even a couple of months back when he signed at Bournemouth and he had a free kick against Man City. Yeah, I was at yeah, home yeah. watching it. Yeah. And I was with my little boy. I said, oh, he's going to score this. And my little boy was like, no, he's not. I was like, he's going to score. He's stuck in the top corner. Like after that free kick, I think that kicked on his season massively. Mm. And he was a big, big player for us. He scored a lot of goals for, for Derby last year. That Derby team, I'm not going to lie to you. I want Elise to win that game. <laughs> I want Elise. But that's just because I like Bielsa, man. Yeah, no, he's, he's I, really I, good. I like Bielsa. And um, going into that game, you guys were underdogs. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Imagine. Did you, um, within yourself though, like I know you, you've got to say that like, leading up to it, oh yeah, you know, we're in with a chance, blah, 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 whatever in it. But did you feel like you could actually, could you like, actually ended up doing them? Yeah. No, honestly, I thought, they beat us three times that season. They beat mm. us four, four one or four nil, second game of the season in. Then they beat us three nil at their place. Mm. Like they battered us during the season. Mm. So and then when they come to our place, they beat us one nil at home, and we're thinking, oh, fuck, you know, yeah, going to their place. They got the advantage, and we had a lot of young lads in the team, and I never, I always was saying to them to the build up to, to the game. I said to Mountie, to Fick, to H, even some of the, some of the older lads, I said, this atmosphere tonight, this is before the Leeds game at Ellen Road, I said, this atmosphere tonight, you're never going to see anything like it. Yeah. So like, be prepared. I said, when that place is rocking, it's, and it's going to be rocking tonight because mm. this is the best they've done in like nine years. They've never been in the playoffs. Yeah, what's the reception that for you when you go back? It's mixed. Mm. Uh, 
get as you do everywhere like you get you get mixed i think a lot of the new fans don't really remember yeah, me yeah. Mm. but not a lot of the old fans do like when i go back there there's still people who work there who, who remember me and stuff yeah. they give me a good reception but no I've, I've always like even after the game there i couldn't didn't really want to celebrate as yeah. as much in front of the fans because like i said they respect me i respect them but it's a lot of new fans there now who don't really know mm. but the older lot do it's 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 a mixed reception but um yeah i said to them before that game i said you're never gonna uh feel or see an atmosphere like this in your mm. life and they were like yeah 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 and then no word of lie we walked out and then you know Lee sing that marching on together yeah, in yeah, the yeah. line and they were like that they didn't know where to look they were, we, were talk, we were this close to each other mm. trying to talk to each other you couldn't hear each other you had to shout at each other They're like the atmosphere was a joke so going into the game if i'm honest sitting here being honest i was thinking no like Lee's are gonna do it and and <laughs> the, the way they played that year they they deserved to go up like mm. they were top two throughout the whole season and just had a little bad run towards the end of the season. But to do it at the way we done it, I think, and especially they went 1-0 up mm. within 20 minutes. So that's 2-0 now. And, and, and we're thinking, oh my God, this could be like 20 minutes in with the crowd like that. Yeah. It could be a long road back. But then we, we scored. At a, if you could write a game of when to score, what we scored it is that, Perfect time. We mm. scored a minute before half time and then a minute straight after, after half time. Yeah. So then that makes it two two and then they've got to come out. The thing is with them when when it gets hard, when it gets tough, mm. that sort of atmosphere where it's so good yeah, can turn a, so no, quick. It, it did. Yeah. It can did turn so quick. And I've been there. Mm. I've played in games there where we've been winning by three goals and, and we end up losing like it can turn. Mm. And um when we when we went two nil up, like you could feel it turn and then mm. Did we go, was it 2-1? And then, then they scored and then it changed again. And then we scored three. Mm. And it, it was just, a, it was just a, a game of just emotions. Like, you could not write that game. Yeah. But then, for me now, sitting here, it's the best game I've been involved in. Through, through that matter of fact of how much emotions changed where mm. they went 1-0 up, they were buzzing. Then we went 2-1 up, it was flat. Then they scored again. It was so much. Not like, just that, but it was actually a good game to watch. Yeah, it was a really good game. It was, it was, best it game to be game involved to in. Watch. Like the, it's the best, biggest game and the best game of football I've been involved in. Because normally like, you go to a final and it's, everyone's scared, mm. attentive and all that. But to beat them 4-2 at their place as well, it was just for yeah. us. Like, Derby and, and no one was expecting us to do as well as we did last year. You know, we, we lost a lot of players and signed all these young players. It was Lampard's first year in management. So, what was he like as a as a manager? Yeah, he was good. He was very honest, mm. and um, I think what he found hard um, was the losing as aspect yeah. of where he was a player for so long. Yeah, going into management and losing a game, it still affected him like it was a he was a player. Yeah. So when we lose a game. Like we'll come in on a Wednesday and you 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 if you're sitting there yourself thinking shit on a bad game like it still affects mm. you on Wednesday. Whereas I think as a manager you can't be like that and yeah. and that's what he he was like when we lost the game it affected him which is a good thing because mm. he wants to win and he's he's, he's a winner mm. he's always been a winner but I think when you're a manager you got to when you lose just say what you have to say on, on the Saturday or on the Monday yeah, when you review it and then just go bang, right, yeah. we've got another game. Because that energy then goes through. Yeah, it does. Like, and, yeah. And, it, and it becomes a, it creates a sort of like atmosphere of like mm. uncertainty and like he found losing hard, which you can accept because he's, as I said, he's been a winner throughout his whole life. But his, his man management skills were, were were good. He was just honest. Mm. Um I had, a, I had a bit of a fallout with him when I, I got tell. suspended. <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> you, to come up. you know what? As I'm talking, I'm thinking something, something happened. <laughs> no, I'm not a fallout. It's just where he was honest. I, I got suspended uh, last year for five games, and then I was where I weren't playing. There was, there was no need for me to be in and around the first team, so I was yeah. training with the kids, mm. training with the 23s. What, did he make you go there? Yeah, but, well, I... He didn't... Yeah, he made me go there, but I... It wasn't a case of, oh, you're going with the 23 you never mm. can run back. Well, I understood that these next five games, I'm yeah. not involved with you, okay, so go with the 23s and do extra more running and stuff mm. like that. But then I come back, my band was over, and then couldn't get in the squads, didn't make the squad for about six games... 
couldn't even get on the bench. Mm. And then like, I went to see him. I was like, Gaffer, like, what's going on? Like, before the band I was playing for you, I got banned. And then um, my band's over now. I'm not even making the squads. And he was just honest. He said, look, Brad, I think you've you've your training has, has gone from a level where you were up here to down here. Even though and you've been with the under 23s? Yeah. Yeah, he said, I, I, I feel your level. And, I, and, and it was one of them cases where I was like, okay, like, but why didn't you say that to me? I said, um, it's taken for me to come in here after five weeks of not being in the squad, coming in on Saturday by myself and running. If I didn't come and speak to you, then I would never know. I said, I'm not a mind reader. Yeah. And um, he said, oh, look, like, you need to buck up your, your ideas in training. Like, because training under him and Jody was intense. Like, and you could tell that because the way how we played last year was high intensity press. Yeah. And they demanded, like, some managers, where you had it before, when you know you're playing, you can sort of ease off in training, mm. and, like look after yourself. Like I've, me now, I'm an older pro, like so I know what I can do during the week, but I know I'm going to be ready for the Saturday. But they wanted, as because he was a player himself, so that's probably what he was like, that yeah. he trained to his maximum every single day. And then he said that you train your maximum every single day and then come Saturday, it's easy for you. So mm. that's how he was, but we ain't been like that. I ain't, I ain't been like that. I've always like looked after myself. But it was a, it was a, change for me so mm. he was honest he said that to me he said look buck up your ideas in training and you get back in and I had to take that I just got my head down in training and I think three weeks later he played me against Ipswich away and then from then I played every single game underneath him towards the end of the season mm. so he was honest but truthful when he stuck to his word he said if you level up yourself in training then you'll you'll get your chance and then I feel like when he went Chelsea but looking back sorry when he said the thing about the training do you now look back and think, you know, I could have done a bit more? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and that's what I mean. I was honest with myself. Yeah. I knew, I didn't, at that time, I wasn't going in saying, oh, fuck this and mm. I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that. But where, where I was suspended, I had nothing to look forward to mm. at the end of the week. Do you know what I mean? I, I knew I was coming in on a Saturday by myself and I was running by myself. It was, mm. it was boring. So I can see where he was coming from. And then when my band was over, I thought, all right, well, I'm back now. I can yeah. And he was like, no, you're not doing that. Like you... You done that for three weeks. Why do you think you can come back in now? So mm. it, it was it was honest with me, truthful. So um Are you surprised by his um his success in Vertical Commas at um I say success because he ain't really won mm. anything yet, but um he's doing well. He's doing well. Doing well. No, I'm not surprised because the young lads, he he gets them at it. Mm. Like and going back to that being honest thing, I can I can see why he let David Lewis go. David Lewis. I can, I can just tell that he's gone in there and David Lewis has probably gone, oh, I want to play every game or whatever. Yeah. And he's like, no, nah, like, it's not going to happen. And like, he's left. He's just honest. He's just sold us a dud. Yeah, yeah. He's just he's just, just honest. So young players, he gets them working hard and training. It's how I went to um, watch him at the Liverpool game. Uh, Matty got me tickets for the game to mm. my little boy there. And I went down after and I, and I saw the gaffer and all that. And I was like, oh, like, how's pre-season been? Mm. How was your pre-season? He's like, Brad, these players, they, they can't handle it. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, they, they can't do the running that we lot done last year. And I was like, mm. no way. He's like, yeah, they're talking like big players. Yeah. Like, they're big players. They're like talking internationals, like world-class players. Couldn't do the running. And he and he was surprised. I was like, he was like, yeah, like we had to cut down half of the running that we done with. we done exactly the same pre-season that we done with you lot last year. Yeah. Derby, done it here. Well, we tried to do it here. They couldn't handle it. I was like, no way. He was like, yeah. And so they've had a shock come in but then you see all the young lads who excel from it because yeah. they're, they're hungry they love to do it and, and he's he's really good at getting you motivated for a game and stuff like that so I'm not surprised with how well the young lads are done mm. not surprised at that at all because and he is very good at giving young lads a chance he was always bringing the under 23s up with us and training with us and always giving them a chance so mm. I'm not surprised at that but then again it's the, it's the Premier League and like that can only last for, for so long when yeah. when the tough gets mm-hmm. tough in that league and, and you need men and you, you need, need experience. Yeah, you need the big when, players. Yeah, so. Um, you ain't got to say much about this if you don't want to. But what was your whole take on the whole um, Derby incident? You oh, with Keezy? You weren't there, yeah. Yeah, as... Because we spoke about on, on on the pod and obviously I'm not an insider in it. Mm. But... Um, I felt it was unfair yeah. on, on him majorly. And um, it 
it looked like, for those that don't know what, what we're talking about, we're talking about when I think they've gone out on a night out or something and um, cars crashed, drink driving. Um, what's his first name? Richard Keogh. Yeah. yeah. He, um, he wasn't driving, but he's, he got injured. Mm. And they Seriously, they, yeah. they cancelled his contract, mm. they terminated his contract, even though he weren't the one driving Driver, or anything. No, he didn't, but then the other know, players who were law, who yeah. were actually driving are still playing at, yeah. at the cl- at the club, in it. And um, yeah, I remember we were saying that that's just they must want him out. Do you get what I'm saying? And obviously you're still playing, yeah. so you ain't actually got a say. No, no, I, I agree with you. I, I, when I first saw it, obviously I'm not at the club anymore, but I still mm. speak to them. Yeah, and um, yeah, I, I think it's, it's unfair. I think. It, I'm sitting here now. I think if you sack one, you got to sack them all. Yeah. But I'm not, as I said, I'm not there now. I still speak to Keezy now. He's is he going to be okay? Friends. Is he going to be okay? Yeah, yeah, he's, oh, yeah. Okay, he's going to be okay. fine. He's going to come back, and he wants to come back. Yeah. And I don't know what happened with all the when they offered him a new contract. I, I, I don't yeah. know about all that, but no, I still speak to him now, and he's he's positive that he's going to come back. He's in a, a good place as he can be. You know, it's not not nice not yeah. having a job or being sacked, but. Um, he's appealing it now, and I've um, mm. just got to wait for to see how it comes out. But I was the same, yeah. When it when it happened, I was thinking I couldn't believe it that yeah. he done it. So especially from when you were you've been at the club, so yeah. And yeah. for all that he's done for that club as mm. well, you remember he was there for eight nine years. Captain played played every single game for five years. And played well, and played. He didn't well. miss a game for five years. Didn't miss a game for five seasons. Well, didn't miss one game. Like but then. It's football, like f- football is, as I touched on before, going there back to my league. It's these days, it's, it's it's ruthless, man. So is that why? Why did you leave Derby? Contract? Me, yeah, my contract was over. Yeah, contract done. And they didn't want to like um, offer you. Um, yeah, they wanted to offer. They they offered. They wanted to offer me a contract, but then they wanted to wait for a new manager to come in, mm. and then let the new manager have a look at me, and then decide. And I was at that stage where look, I'm 32 years old now. I'm not Waiting gonna around. wait and yeah. be on trial. From mm. So then Blackburn come in for me and gave me a contract and I, and, and I signed it there. Realistically, yeah, what were Blackburn's um, targets for the season? Playoffs. They were uh, actually playoffs? Yeah, yeah. Okay. They've, they've, they've they've not been close, but they've, they've had good spells in the season where they've gone on good runs, mm. like we have done now. Mm. And then this is what the manager was saying to me. We've, we've done well. We've been there. We've been so close to it. But then just falling off, and they they ain't had that experience where they've got players there who have been there and done it and know what this league takes, like to go away from home and grind out one nil. Yeah. So that's why he, he wanted to sign me, he's trying to stew it down in, mm. sign a lot more experience this year, and and he's got that blend now where I think it's paying off for us. You know, we've got some good young players there. We've got Daki, got Adam Armstrong, Joe Rothwell, a good balance of young and experience there. Now we've got me there, the older boys, me Stewie down in. Danny Graham, Elliot Bennett, mm. a good mixture now. And he said that, that to me before. He said, like, we've had good seasons, we've been on good runs, but then when we go on a bad run, like when we lose one game or lose another game, it just everyone goes into yeah. their shell and okay. no one's got that big characters. But we've got big characters there now and, and we're doing well now. We've gone on nine games unbeaten, so hopefully we can... Yeah, because you guys are now. now sitting, what, three, four points away? Off promotion? third, aren't we? Or one point outside playoffs, No. No. No? Well, I don't know how, how many games you've played this year, this year. I mean, so far. 17, 16, 16, 17. No? More. What am I looking at? 19, 20. It says you've got 22, you've played 22 matches. I don't even know. Yeah, but you lot are. Um... We're not far off the playoffs. No, you're only. And we're not far off third, are we? We're four points off. Oh, third. I'm, I'm chatting rubbish. I'm looking at the wrong column. You're, yeah, you're literally, what, two points off? Yeah. Two points off, and. Oh, yeah. Three off. Um... Third. Third. Yeah, yeah, so we're not doing bad. Halfway. We're, but it's championship, man. That yeah. Could, yeah. And that's what I said, like, we, before this nine game run, we mm. went on six games without winning. Yeah. So that's how mad this championship is. And as oh. I said, I've been in this league long enough now to know that there are going to be games where you play, like, our first game of the season, we played Charlton at home, mm. played well, and we lost a game. And then people couldn't believe it. And so I was I like, is this low. is the league. Like, this is. The league you can play. So I said, I said, and I'd done an interview after that game. I said, we'll, we're going to play worse this year and win. Yeah. 
and then no one's gonna think think about that. Mm. Like they, we're gonna play better and lose. Like that's the nature of this league. It's, it's you can't predict anything in in this championship, and that's why people say it's the best league like in this country, the championship, because no one can predict anything. But when you're on a good run, you have got to sustain that, not get carried away, and just take each game as it comes. And that's what we're doing now. What was that game against Charlton like? I would I did loud loudy. Love scored, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. scored, made it 2-1. <laughs> yeah. Typical striker's goal, a little tapping. No, but I think I think he would agree with you as well. They was on the back foot for the whole game. Mm. We we dominated the game. They scored a set play. No, they scored on the breakaway. And yeah, they, and then they scored a set play. But I thought we dominated the game. Mm. It was their first game in the championship there. I've played, I've been there before where teams have been promoted in, in their first game, they're all buzzing and, and they were buzzing mm. and obviously they got the win so they were buzzing but they didn't play particularly great but then after that they went on an unbelievable run. I think yeah. they they beat everyone, they beat Leeds, they went on an unbelievable run. Yeah, and then now I got injured. And then now they're yeah. finding it hard and, and that's the championship, man. You can't predict it. Look, you can go on a, like us, we can go on a nine game uh, unbeaten run now but then if I sat here with you next month or something, we could have lost yeah. every single game, and that's mm. that's the championship. Have there been any like standout players in the that you've seen in the championship so far that you're like this year? Yeah, standout players. Maybe West... like you've even maybe you ain't even played, but you've seen and you're just thinking, no, this guy. West Brom I've got a few good players. Shall I tell you who I, who I think is really good? Um, the mid centre midfielder for Leeds, Calvin, Calvin Phillips. Phillips. Yeah, player. Yeah, player. He's good. Really good player, and he was he was there when I was there. He's he's come through the ranks, but he was a very young lad there. Mm. But I still I speak to him now. I spoke to him when we played him actually. Um, he could have went in the summer. Yeah, he could oh, have went it? big clubs. I'm, I'm not even. Him. Just when I look at him play, I can tell he's he's gonna play yeah. prem. Yeah, no, easily, he, he's, easily. He's, he's gonna play prem. And he's good. and hopefully he does that with Leeds because if he takes them up, he's captain there. Yeah. If he takes them up, boyhood club, he'd be a hero, hero there. And he wants to do that, you know, he signed another deal there now. He could have went in the summer. Mm. And that's what Leeds, Leeds is a big club, man, and he knows that and he wants to stay there and, and get them up. And I think yeah. this year, I think they'll do it. What were your options like in like during the summer? Quiet, man. Quiet. I think you know that's when so you get crazy though. How, how could it be quiet? Though? No, it is. I'll speak who was I with in the summer? I was with my mate, Gary Hooper, Jason Punchin. Mm-hmm. We was all in the same boat, uh, finished our contracts. Punches um, abroad, our contract, is he in punches Cyprus, had to well? go Cyprus, yeah. Paphos. And um, I actually, I actually went back to Derby pre-season, mm. like I trained for the first three days. They didn't even have a club to go back to. I was like phoning every day. Oh, what's happening? Oh, no, it's, the market's slow, so slow in the summer. And at our age as well, mm. I think it gets even even slower. But, but I find that so mad when you've played however many games and yeah, but you got to think like the football nowadays. They, it's a young man's game. It's young now. Mm. Everyone wants young, athletic, young, but. As I said, I was I was lucky that Tony Mowbray called me up and he, he wants experience. Mm. It's just whatever people want at that at that time. And I think did you bite his hand off or did you actually have to play hard to get? Mm. <laughs> no, I bit his hand off. Man. Bit his hand off. Two years with an option. At Thirty-two years old. Yeah, man. Yeah, bit his hand off. No, but it was slow, man. I remember sitting there. I was on holiday and like training, but I knew I was going back to Derby. I knew I was going back there because. Mm. As I said, they wanted me, not they wanted me, because if they wanted me to stay, they would have gave me a mm. contract in the summer, but they wanted me to come back and let the new manager yeah. have a look at me. Frank Lampard wanted me to stay. Mm. He said to me at the end of the season, what do you want to do? I said, look, listen, I'm comfortable here. My, my family are settled here. I'm, I bought my final home in Derby. I'm settled in Derby now. That's where I'm staying. I want to be here. Mm. And he was like, yeah, no problem. I'll get it sorted. And then obviously in the summer, he went to, to Chelsea. But How far is Derby from um, Blackburn? It's two hours. You don't do it every six. day, though. No, I stay up a few times a week. Oh, okay, cool, cool, yeah. cool. Um, but yeah, drive up there, and, I, and there's a uh, me and Elliot Bennett share the drive, so it's not mm. it's not too bad. Yeah. But yeah, he w- wanted me to stay, but as I said, I didn't want to. I went back there and and said, "Oh, look, Blackburn have offered me this. Mm. Can you?" And then they were ooing and ahhing, saying, "Oh, we're getting a new manager in, and we don't know if you're going to fit in these plans." I said, "Oh, well, fair enough." Like, He's manager there now. Koku, Philip Koku. Oh, oh yeah, the, as he did. Not, not. They're not doing great. Um, we played. We played them two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. We played them at home. Yeah, beat them one 0 But yeah, that, and then they Did lost. Win against Brentford. We beat Brentford. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. We beat Brentford. That's what I thought was um, in London. When I yeah, 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 yeah. No, it was away. But uh, yeah, we, they're not doing doing so great at the moment. But as I said, the championship man, and 
him as well. I don't know if he's got that foreign mentality where he's been in uh, Holland all his life where it's all technical and stuff. Yeah. And coming over to the championship, it's not like that at all. No, mm. it's, it, it's hard, man. So over the weekend, yeah, what was it about just the striker going through that you knew he was going to score? Or were you just hoping? <laughs> no, I knew it. <laughs> he's 1v1, man. If he's... If, if he's a striker and he don't score that, then you've got to... So it's, it's not even just because he's actually that good? Or... No, he, he's good. Armour oh, is good. And everyone... Uh, Leon messaged me as well the day after. He's like, why are you standing there and, and celebrating before you even I think he's celebrating the assist, to be honest. Why are you celebrating? And I was like, trust your players, man. If I put you through one-on-one, what's going to happen? He was like, yeah, a goal. I was like, exactly. You know what Leon so, said when he came on the podcast? Go on. So we played in a charity match as well. And then when we played against each other, obviously I'm younger. Mm. And I'm still playing, so they were... It's not easy, but it's whatever. But he, he played well that game, yeah. and he came on the podcast. And I was like, oh, you did well that game. Like, I don't think I saw you lose the ball. And he goes, I've not given the, um, I'm not giving the ball away since 2011. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's funny, Leo, man. He's funny, but he messaged me after that saying, oh, who do you think you are standing there not carrying on your run? I was like, you've got to trust your players, man. But it was through one-on-one, and, and I felt it. I didn't... I, didn't know he was going to score because you can't miss them, but I think he would score. But if he didn't, he would have made me look like a tip standing yeah. there on the, on the halfway line celebrating. <laughs> yeah, I know. But it looks good now that he's done it. Yeah. But, no, I've, I've done that. I've actually done that before. Like, always, I don't know, with me, like, when I put a ball in or something, I'm like saying to the player, head it. I'm doing the action as well. Yeah. So I'm like, head it, head it. Like, there's a few clips of me. When I was at Derby, I put a cross in for Nuge. I think it was against Forrest put the cross in, I knew he was going to score and I was yeah. jumping up, jumping up, like trying to heal it in for him. And then I think when we went up at Leeds, uh, the promotion game where I put a cross in and then it dropped to Jermaine Bedford yeah. and I just knew he was going to score. I was already celebrating with the fans. I was yeah. jumping in the fans before he even put the ball in the net. I, thought after, I don't know, I've always just always, because I'm not there, I feel like oh, mm. I want to do it and, then, and I just trusted that he's going to score. Do you still think now, yeah, <clears throat> you can play, I'm sure we even touched on Norwich. Um, do you still think now you could play Prem? Yeah. You do? Prem, it's different to the Championship. As I touched on before, it's, I say it's two leagues, but it's a lot slower. Mm. Mid, especially in midfield as well, it's a lot more... It's a thinking It's a thinking game. So yeah. I think in the Prem, you can't make as many mistakes as you can in the Championship. Yeah. So in the Championship, you, you can give... Not you can, because there are yeah. good players in the Championship, but you get away with more in the championship mm. than you do in the Premier League. So it's a lot more playing out from the back, playing in midfield. It's just a, but when you get into that final third, it's mm. rapid. Is it's it? so quick. Like from when you was in the Prem, was, was there, obviously there's, there are a lot of players, but was there a moment when you thought, oh, we're playing football, football? Like, this is Man mad. City, man. Man City. We were, I think we were 4 0 down in 24 minutes. <laughs> At the Etihad as well. Yeah. I just wanted a hole to open up and just jump in it. Yeah. Oh, I was frightening, man. They had silver. Was it a blow? Well? Yeah. Just changing. We were we were basically playing eight at the back. Yeah. And uh, two strikers because everyone was sat back defending. The way they moved the ball, oh, it was frightening. Aguero was so sharp. They beat us. I think they, the game ended up five or maybe seven one. Balotelli scored with his shoulder. Ah, oh, I remember on the line. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember I mean, that. Yeah, but there's been a been a few games like Man City beat us a good few times. Man, did when you play Norwich. when um, when Ramsey scored that volley? The balls come across at Carrow Road. Mm, I don't know. I can't I'll, I'll get it up for you. No, but go on, go on, go on. I can't remember. Um, that. But yeah, but we played Arsenal was a good team for us at Norwich. We done well against Arsenal. We beat them at Carrow Road. What's um, it like? Could you support Arsenal? Yeah, it was. Good, surreal, like all my family there and mm. obviously splitting between who they're, who they're going to support. But I remember my first time when I played at Emirates, it was unbelievable. I think we drew the game 3-3 free, free as well. It's an unbelievable game. We, we yeah, might talking about Arsenal up. just stresses just, me, man. Just, what, do, what do you think about Arsenal right now, honestly? They're just, they just need, they need players who are going to stick their foot in. They need characters, man. I don't think they've, they've got that there. They've got... Nice players, technical players, unbelievable players like Ozil, like as it, but mm. they ain't got them hard like n- grafters, man. Yeah, like, hard as nails grafters who are just gonna just stick their foot in and just run, run through brick walls yeah, for you, man. Like, 
yeah, I, got, I always go back to like, the, the days when I was a supporter. Like, yeah, Tony Adams, Vieira, Petit, them players there. They, they Even got, players like like the Grimondis and yeah, like, Grimondi and um, who's the other one? Flem, Flemini, oh, Flemini like, stuff yeah. like that. Like, players like him who you know they're not the best technical, but you need them sort of players in, in your team, man. Mm. The ones who are gonna run through a brick wall for you, man. They ain't got they ain't got many of them. What do you think of Arteta look looking like he's gonna get the job? Yeah, I, I think he will do well. But then again, it's it's they ain't got the. Is he he's gonna go there and try and play away like Pep plays at, at Man City? But he ain't got the players he's, for that. Yeah, has he got the players for that? Has he got? He's got the players who can play football because obviously they're they're, they're unbelievable players. But I think it's just hard, man. Like the, the defense at Arsenal, he's sorting out. And do you know what? It's it's one thing to have bad personnel, but they don't even have the know how to even know how to defend mm. as as a. Mm. Oh, and I think shots everyone's just every blaming game. everyone there, man. No. Okay, so did you have a problem with, I don't know if you saw it, but it was on social media and um, a lot of, um, some of the pundits were going mad as well. The other week, we played when we played Brighton, Willock was through. And um, did you see the Brighton game any chance? No. Okay, so basically Willock's gone through. We're attacking them. He's got two players running that way. Lacazette and, no, yeah, Lacazette and... Or Mati, you have it, and Ozil mm. and Aubameyang down here. You either give it early to Aubameyang, or you just go forward and give a pass, or you shoot, or something. He's delayed, 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 and then Aubameyang's had to like he can't make that run inside anymore, mm. so he he stayed out. But then Willett's just gone and played like it was just such a bad pass, and Aubameyang's ripped him. Yeah. He's ripped him like wow, we did blah 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 blah. I didn't find anything wrong with it. Well, and pundits said that he shouldn't. Have pundits were like, as an older player, you you can't like. You can't rip into a younger no, player. No, you like can that. do, man. That's what I'm saying. No, you can. But I don't know. I think football's just changed, man. No, you can, and, and it has changed mm. from that. Even going back to me when when I was when I was a youth team player, and I saw a first team player, I was shit scared of them. Mm. Like, I would never say like, and I'm saying that coming from in East London, I was going up to Cambridge, you know, and I thought I was a little been rude yeah. boy. I'll, I'll shit myself. But now these kids nowadays, man, it's just. They just get everything given to them. It's too easy for them. So, and then when someone has a go, um, you've got people saying, oh, it's bullying and, and stuff mm. like that. But I guarantee these pundits who are saying that Would were the ones who were giving it out like, to youngsters or, or receiving it from them. And I think it has changed. These young lads now, I think they're getting it too too easy. Like, it's just getting late to them on the plate. They yeah, don't... I, I, I didn't think there was anything wrong with that. No, to, I don't to, think, to, think, to, I don't wrong think wrong Willick that. probably even thought there was anything wrong with that. But. It is what it is. That's, mm. that's Arsenal for you. Everyone's just trying to make a story out of nothing, man. When when things are low, everyone just tries to pick the bones out of everything mm. and then try and make something up. Do you notice that? Like, so when things are going bad for you, obviously you're probably just rocking up to training. You know you got to do better. Mm. But the media will then make a bigger story. Oh of yeah, it. of course. And you look at it and just think, and you're you're, you're at the club, you know, thinking, what are these not talking about? Yeah, but then as soon as you score a goal and I get an MOM or something, oh, yeah. they want to interview you. It's crazy, man. Media, the media, that's what it is, man. They big you up when they want to mm. big you up and when they want to, when it's slow news or something, they mm. just make up a story about you and, and just try and... What's been the worst story? Up. What's been the worst story you've heard about yourself? <sighs> about myself? Um, <laughs> no, there's not been many, man. It's, I'll go back to when, when I was in the Premier League with Norwich just making, and I got in the um, England provisional squad. Yeah. And my mate from back home, a close friend of mine, nothing to do nothing to do with, with gangs or anything. He got shot six yeah. times. Oof. Yeah, he survived, luckily survived. And this was nothing to do with gangs or nothing. It was just a dispute he had with, with some yeah, boy. He got yeah. shot in, in his shop. And I went to the hospital to see him. I was my friend. So I come down, he was in Whitechapel. I went, ran down there, see him. And then... Obviously, it was a big thing that happened in Woodford, it was. He got shot in Woodford. So all police and I went up to the hospital and there was press there and I got f- photographed outside the hospital. Yeah. And then maybe about two days later, his mum phoned me up and um, said, oh, I've had a journalist come knocking at my house. And I was like, okay. And they're asking about you. And I was like, what do you mean asking about me? And I was like, oh, yeah, um, saying um, your son's been involved in gang shooting. Um, uh and Bradley Johnson was at the hospital. Was, is he involved in gangs and stuff like that in, in, in London? And I was like, 
What? So I phoned my agent, told my agent, my agent phoned them up. Mm. I said, you can't run this story. So apparently it was a day. And then another friend of mine called me up and said, oh, I've had a phone call off this reporter from thinking, asking about um, you when you was uh, young. Were you involved in gangs and stuff like mm. that? And um, yeah, it was a day from, from coming out, but it got stopped because of my um, agent stopped it. And that's, that's one of the reasons as well why not many people know about like my past, like yeah. that stabbing because although I want to come out and say it and, and be aware, so I want to do some stuff like back home and, and talk to these kids, man, because it's not right what everyone's doing. But at that time I had a, a career to look after and everyone, yeah. when when you're doing so well, the media just want looking for a story to, to bring you down. And my agent was like, look, listen, you can't have, like at that time you was in the England provisional squad, you can't have like, people saying you was involved in the gang and involved in the shoot and then they'll look in your past and mm. go back to thinking, oh yeah, you got stabbed so you must have been involved yeah. in the gang. I was never involved in the gang. I was just around where stuff like that happened like back in Leighton. Yeah. So that's probably the worst story that, it never come out. Yeah, but still. But yeah, it was one of them that could have really affected like my career. Do you hate, like, not hate, but like when it comes to doing media, do you kind of just look at it? Cause I know a lot of players just don't like media mm. because... It's all a bit of fake as well. Oh yeah, of course. You just, can't. It's... You can't like here now. I'm being real. You can't in mm. the media after a game. You can't or like you can't say. Don't you ever just want to sometimes just after the game just give the real? <laughs> yeah, you can't. You got to say like they ask you questions. Oh, uh, so what? What's what got said in the dressing room and and how's the manager? You can't. You can't be real. You can't come out and say. Oh yeah, this is what I think. It's like the he should be in this team. And it's all, all about that. the three points. How many times you said that one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> great character. Yeah. <laughs> Don't matter how we play the three points. Have a good weekend. <laughs> Thank you for the fans for coming. But yeah, no, it's 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 just a weird because a lot of players that like, we've had players approach us to come on on the pod, mm. but then it's almost as if we've had a, a few want to come on, but then. An agent has told them not to not to do it mm. because no, they do might, get that. Yeah, you do they get might that. say something or whatever. Mm. And and I'm just like, like you come in here. I don't think I've I've stitched you up or anything. No. Like, but and I'll never do that. But they're so scared of something coming out. Yeah, that they don't. And no, it does happen though because the media just were waiting for a person to slip up and mm. bang jump on it. Like the stuff they're doing to Raheem Sterling. Like you've seen it, like big, you seen the Pogba big stuff, players, really? huh? You seen the Pogba stuff? Yeah, yeah, because he was dancing at a wedding and stuff like that. That's not his wedding. Yeah, that's what I mean. You can't in them big players. You can't enjoy yourself outside mm. of like football, like. And the joke is, no, no word of a lie. We could have got Pogba on the podcast. Really? Yeah, because we got. I've got like a a mutual friend who's his family, mm. and he was at that wedding as well, and he was trying to line it up, but then. Something happened where talk came out and they were just ripping into Pogba. Yeah. And he was mm. like, you know, I'm not doing no media. Yeah, um, and, and and I can understand why players do that, yeah, man, because just... you're like, they, they just try and drag you down to anything, man. Just make up story. Like, Raheem Sterling goes shopping in Poundland. Oh. How's that a story? But if you went shopping in just in... <laughs> in Louis Vuitton, oh, Raheem Sterling yeah. being, being big time. Like, it's, it's, it's crazy, man. It's just, yeah, I can, I can understand why players don't, do media stuff because but they're, they're good for you when you want them yeah. like you got to know how to use them really but yeah but, but I ain't ever had to deal with that such of a high level because I've never been at that high level but I can understand why big players like Paul Scholes never ever done an interview did he when yeah. he was a player and stuff like that they so when media. I first heard him talk I was like is this mm. what he sounds like yeah it was like after his um, after his career because they can spin words as well I remember I'd done an interview with um, my first year at Derby because I left Norwich uh, and it was all like up in the air. I left at the last minute and mm. fans were upset and stuff like that. I never ever really got my say, like why I left and why they sold me and stuff. So I'd done an interview with um, a reporter from Norwich and then said my say. And then at the end of the interview, he's like, oh, I'm just being cheeky, but would you ever come back to Norwich? And I was like, oh, well, look, I've got two years left here at Derby. Mm. I said, um, Everyone knew what I thought of Norwich. I love Norwich there. My first kid's born in Norwich. I've got family. Like, people as a class as family in Norwich now. Mm. got my house there, I said. And football is football. Like Things can change. Right? Yeah. So I never say never. Two days later, in the back of the local uh, Norwich newspaper, mm. um, cry plea for Bradley to come home. Like, <laughs> like, they just twist your words, man. And then I got stick from the Derby fans. From the... But that's what I'm saying. 
when the club sees that, does someone come in, come to you like, what's going on here? Yeah, so that that's what happened. It was a Norwich reporter mm. who who phoned me up, so I spoke to him, and then obviously what reporters do, they they send out, they send each other stuff, didn't they? So yeah, yeah. the Norwich reporter sent that interview to the Derby reporter, yeah. Derby Telegraph, and then he printed it in the Derby Telegraph mm. that uh, Bradley's plea, come and get me to Norwich. And then, so then I phoned the manager, Gary Wright at the time, and it, this was in the summer. Yeah. And um, I phoned him and he's like, do you know? And I was like, Gaffer, have you seen the paper? He's like, no, what? And I told him, he's like, oh, can, oh. so I was like, yeah. why are they doing that? So then the club phoned um, that reporter up. Yeah. But that reporter used to come into our club on a Friday and do press conference and everything. Yeah. And then, and then um, I said to him, why would they do that? Like the seasons, we're in the off season, the season's going to start. Mm. I'm getting a stick now on, on social media saying, oh, Bradley wants to go back to Norwich because we had a, we, what did we do that year? We got to the semi-finals and didn't, we didn't get through to the final playoffs. Mm. We lost the hole in the semi-finals. Oh, he wants to go back to Norwich. Let him go back. Yeah, like fans were saying, let him go back. He's he, he shit anyway and stuff yeah. like that. I'm thinking, why would your local club, like who's meant to look after you, like mm. put that out to all the fans? Like, it don't make sense just to sell a story. And then after that, I said to that guy, his name was, um, what was his name? Chris Watson, his name was a reporter. I said to him, I'll never do an interview with him again. Thank and then the first game of the season, that season, first game of the season, we played Sunderland. I scored. They wanted me to do an interview after the game. I went, no, I'm not doing it. Because you saw who, who it was with? Yeah. So I walked out there mm. and he was there. I was like, oh, you want to do an interview with me now, yeah? No, no. Yeah. Um, after the match, though, when they drag you, can you say no? Yeah. Yeah, you can. You can say no, but it depends on the manager. Mm. Right. So the player there is an officer come and got me in the change room said, oh, press want you. And yeah. I was like, nah, what? I've scored a goal now. No chance I'm yeah. doing press. It's like, no, you got to do it. The manager said you got to do it. Yeah. Like, because every game the manager gets interviewed and then they pick a player yeah. and they must go up to the manager and say, oh, like, we're picking this player now. Like, mm. can he do the press? Because after, if you get battered at home, the manager is not going to send out a little kid to do interviews. Yeah. They, they get a senior player or something. So they must go to the manager and say, like, we're going to interview this player, is that all right? And they go, yeah. So they must have said to Gary Wright after the game, oh, I'm going to interview Jono, is that all right? And he must have went, yeah, but he didn't know that there was a guy. So then Raul stood out there doing the interview and then I've walked out in the tunnel and I've saw the guy and I've gone to our play there. So I was like, I'm not I'm doing, doing it, I'm not doing speaking it. to him. He's yeah. like, oh, you've got to do it, come on, you've got to do it. They've they asked you, I didn't do it. So then he's like, the manager's picked you. I went, oh, well, I'll ask him then. So then he finished his interview, I went, Gaffer, did you want me to do an interview? He went, oh, why don't you want to do it? I went, well, it's that reporter who sold that, that crap story about me in the summer. He went, oh, fuck it, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. I yeah. went, oh, later, I walked to play. And they were like, oh, so let's go and get another player to do it. So you, you can you can say no, but if you get asked and there's no problem, you, you'd never say no, really. But yeah. you you can say no, but then when questions get asked, you, you can just say, no, I'm not answering now, stuff like that, and just kill their interview. Mm. What are some of the things about football that, people don't see that you just maybe just do not like? Because obviously everyone always thinks that you're a footballer, life's just easy. The emotional side of it, the mm. mentally side, mental side of it, the, when you get injured, mm. not What's your longest injury? I've touched wood. I ain't been injured once. Yeah. Long term. Long term. Wood. Yeah, mm. long term, I ain't been injured once. But I've been around players who have been injured long term and it's, yeah. it's hard, man. You, you're going in, you can't go out. So the longest I've been injured for, I broke my, I fractured my back uh, three years ago. Yeah, three, three, three vertebrae in my back. I fractured. How do you manage that? Going up for a header and then just landed, come down on my mm. back. So seven weeks was the longest I've been out for, mm. and it's hard. You go in, you're in the changing room, you're part of the banner and everything, and then they go out, yeah. and you're in the treatment room. You're getting treatment, and you're looking at them training. You want to be out there training, mm. and then. You do stuff, you're doing that every day for three weeks. Yeah. And then the physio goes to you, right, we're out on the grass tomorrow. Yeah. You're, like, you're buzzing for it. You go out on the grass and then it comes back again. And like people get reoccurring injuries, that side of it is hard to take. Which player would you say is always in the treatment room? <laughs> Whenever you've been at clubs. Whenever I've been at club. <laughs> is there one player? Derby <laughs> was George Fawn. Uh. But that's not a funny, that's unlucky because when I went there, when I first signed for Derby, the first six months, he was the best player I played with, mm. midfielder. Unbelievable he was. Then he had a bad uh, leg break. And then after that, he just picks up niggles. That's, and that's what, thing, that's that's, thing. That's what mm. happens with injuries. When, so say if I've done my, my knee, I'm in the treatment room, doing all my exercises in the gym on my mm. right knee, 
you just forget about your left knee. Yeah. So you're strengthening all this side of your body. Your hammy, you're strengthening this side. You go outside, sprint, and your left hammy goes. Like, because you just forget about it. I, what do you call it? Um, so I broke tip and fib. Mm. Snapped. And then when I come back, that was, I've never had an injury in my life apart from that one. Yeah. Came back, I remember running, and like you said, in this leg, it felt like someone dashed something cut my, at my hamstring. It just yeah, popped. popped. It just popped. Yeah, it's because you do all the rehab strengthening yeah, that side, knee. you just forget about your other side. Yeah. And, that's, and that's what happens. And that's when people have long term injuries, they always say to you, oh, you'll be back in nine months. But it's never that because they just pick up little niggles along the way. Uh, yeah, so that side of it, the injury side, it's hard. And emotionally, when you're not getting picked. Mm. So the manager. No. So when you've been out of the team this this year, like with Blackburn, because there's a couple of games you didn't even get on. I think, no, before Saturday, I didn't play for six games. Didn't yeah, get like, on. and I was I was looking. I was because sometimes I would have. <laughs> sometimes I'm like, let me look at the squad first before before I, <laughs> before yeah. I message yeah, you. Really. So then, um, what do you call it? I'm seeing that you know you'll come on or whatever, but then I'm seeing there's games where you literally just don't come on. I'm yeah. like, does the manager not fancy him or what? But then I see. And there's and yeah, no and and it is hard because you're sitting there during the game thinking right I can come on there and, mm. and like make an impact in this game or or if we're winning like two one and the other team are like getting on top I can come on a bit experience to shore yeah. things up and then the manager puts on someone else and you think like, like come on it is it's hard and then when you're not playing when when a club want to sell when a club want to get you out mm. it's horrible what they can do to you but I've been I ain't been in that situation yeah. before but I know players who have been there and the club will make them come in by themselves, train by themselves or train with the kids. Yeah. And then no, you're not, not even allowed nowhere near the first team. So you've got to come in after they've, they've been in the building. You've got to come in after they've gone, had their lunch. Then you've got to come in, do your gym by yourself. Yeah. Like it's mad. One of my mates, Giles Coke, he's going through that now. I hold him. He can't be nowhere near the first team because they want him out. So they're training, he's training with the kids, but then they make you go to the games. And you think like you don't want me near the first team, but then you want they just do it. it. Like they just they can do it. Breaking point. And just yeah, have... and they can do it like to mentally try and break you to make yeah. you do something. That's what people don't like see that, that side of the game is it is it is it's, for me now. The older I've got, it's I see football now as more as a business. Yeah. So. But you still love it though. Yeah, I still love it. Yeah, yeah. don't get me wrong, I still love it. But then there are times when I think, you know, man, like. I'm a human being. Like sometimes yeah. you get people get treated like a piece of meat. Like mm. once your sell by dates out, that's it. You're done. Like and f- say for instance, they're Koki, They don't want him near the first team um, every week, but then they don't want to give him a weekend off, so they make him come to the game on a Saturday. Like it's just stuff like that. They can do. They can do what not what they want because there are some stuff that they can't do, but they can make your life like hard. Make you yeah. come in at four o'clock when no one's there. And, <laughs> go in the gym and do hour running and then if you don't for instance if you don't live in the area where your club mm, is mm. so like say for instance me if Blackburn done that to me I don't live in Blackburn I live in Derby so if they said to me oh you got to come in at four o'clock I'm leaving my house I'm not getting back till like you'll have to I'll have to live up there and I don't want to do that because I've got mm. kids who go to school and like, yeah. they can, and and then not only that the emotional side is that when you're getting treated like that at your workplace you take it home. Yeah. And then you take it out on your missus, you take mm. it out on your kids. It's not fair, man. Like, my missus, be fair, I've been my missus 15 years. Like, and she's from yeah. she's from Leighton as well. Mm. Her mum and dad still live in, in Leighton. She's, she's been with me through everything, through, from the start mm. all the way to now. And she's seen how it is like in football. With, with football, though, because obviously you have a family now. If any club comes in for you, you have to think about... Oh, of course. Yeah, the, the family now. So let's say... What would it take for you to uproot your family? Are you settled in, in Derby? I'm settled in Derby, yeah. Okay, so for you to... If Newcastle came in... Okay, no, Newcastle's a big team. That's, that's, yeah. very, that's very different. Who's the team up, up north in your division? Say... Far team. Preston, around the corner. If Preston come in for you, would it, would it be a thing of... And they offered you a good deal, but your family settled. Would it be a thing of, you know what, I can't do that because of my family? Yeah. And that was that's what I went through this 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 summer. Mm. I said to my agent, "Look, because he was like, oh, would you fancy going abroad?" Mm. And I was like, I'm "Not, not, no, no, I don't want to go abroad. My kids are settled here. You could get good teams abroad." Though. And and that's what he said to me. Mm. But I said, "Look, my family is settled here because I had a chance to go 
Last year when I was at Derby, I had a chance to go to Italy on, lo on loan mm. to a Serie A club. Oh, really? And um, they, because when I weren't playing, when I got suspended and I couldn't get in the team, it was January. So then um, they come in for me and and my agent texted me and said, oh, do you fancy Serie A? Mm. And I was like, what team? And he went, don't worry about the team. <laughs> he said, do you fancy playing in the Serie A? Mm. And I was like, shit, this was about 10 o'clock at night. i never forget. Yeah. I was in bed with my missus and I was like, what? And I was like, what team? And he said, the team. And then I went, are you being serious? Frissing one, they were called. They were second from bottom. They got relegated last year. Mm. But he said, don't worry about that. You go out there for six months, you play, mm. and then you're out of contract at Derby. Anything can happen. You yeah. can get a big club in, in Serra and just have a look at your fixtures. So I went on their website, look at fixtures, Juve, Napoli, AC Milan on Boxing Day. And yeah. I was like, oh, shit. Like, and, I was, and then I said, and then he said, not even that, the club, Frissing one, they're based in Rome. Yeah. So you'd be oh, living in Rome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Like I said to my missus, oh, shit, and then spoke about it. And then we worked it out. If I went there in January until the end of the season, my kids have free holidays in between that time, like half term, Easter and something else. We, we can take them out of school for two weeks. Mm. And then out of the three months that are there, they'll be with me for a month and a half. Yeah. So we worked it out and like I was like, okay, then like, I'm not playing at Derby. Like, I'm coming to the end of my contract. I need to be playing games. Mm. So I sort of got my head around it. I said, and, um, said to my agent, yeah, I fancy it, do it. And then spoke to them and I was like, okay, then we want him to come out on Wednesday. So I was in my house Tuesday night, going down to, coming down to London to go from London City Airport to fly out there. Woke up the next day, the manager got sacked and he was like, oh, we're putting it on hold. Oh. I was like, oh no. Like, I got my head around it thinking I'm gonna go out there. By this time, did Derby know? Yeah, they knew. Okay. Yeah, and they were gonna let me go and then, and then that was another thing that Frank Lampard said to me. He said, oh, I know the club come in for you alone yeah. and you wanted to go. And I said, look, I didn't want to go, but mm -mm -mm. I was yeah, going to go out there and play football mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm coming to the end of my contract now. I'm 31 years old. I need to be playing, like, f looking out for next year. And he understood that. And he was like, no, like, I totally agree with you. But the manager got sat. So he said, I said, and, and I'm here now. Like, I'm not kicking up a fuss and I want to go out and loan now and play. I said, I'm here now. I'll fight for my players. I'm not going to kick up a fuss or anything. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, yeah, it didn't happen. So... Uh, Things like, yeah, things like that do happen. Like, he said to me, oh, do you want to go abroad and look at the MLS or something? But I said, again, you're just touching the kids and I don't... It happened to me at Norwich. My kid, well, I just put my kid in... My, we only had one boy then. Just put him in nursery in Norwich. And, um, like, you know what kids are like? It took him about three months to literally... Every time I dropped him, I had to wait there for about 20 minutes and then sneak out. Yeah. And he just got comfortable in there. And then Derby bought me and I had yeah. to move to a derby and then we had to live in a hotel for three months yeah. then find him a school go through all that transition again where he didn't know anyone and he was shy he didn't want to go to school yeah. so I won't do that again I've got kids three now? kids now they're six three and one six, oh, especially for one year old yeah so I won't he would have to be for them so if I went somewhere what? say for instance if I went to MLS it would have to be somewhere a nice state where yeah, New York I don't know about New York though, living for kids like, oh. I think, like, for kids, like, somewhere, like, where they've got a beach and well, something like that. Yeah, something yeah. like that where good school, I don't know what the school's like out there, yeah. but good opportunity for, like, kids to go to a good school, like, different to here, like, something different. We can't go to the beach every day here, so if yeah. we've got somewhere like that, that would interest me. But other than that, not, not, nothing majorly will make me, me move that. I've, I've, I've felt like I've, I've had a good career. And, um, but you're not thinking about the end of it, so... No, I ain't thinking about the end, yeah. no, no. No, hopefully I can play till I can... I'm 38, 40, hopefully. Mm -hmm. But then again, it's that all depends on how low I'd have to go. You know what I mean? Yeah, because if I don't you start be, getting that no, good league and... No, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> no, going I'm back to Wolfram Forest. No, I'm not doing that. I've, I've done my badges, so that's something I'm definitely interested oh, you, in. You want to coach? Yeah, I've, I've been in the game long now and I've seen so many coaches, man. Mm. And I think if when I'm 50, I can do that easy. Like yeah. Being a top top club in, in the championship, like, I've had... So many managers and and some of the coaches that I've seen, I think, ah, are you a coach? Yeah. Like, so I, I think that's something I'm definitely interested. In. I've done my badges. I said I've done my badges. I really enjoyed it. Mm. Last year I was doing the under 15s and under 12s at Derby coaching on the on the evening. Really enjoyed it. I'm not doing it so much now because I'm travelling up and down from Blackburn, so I can't do coaching. Mm. But yeah, something that I'm definitely interested in coaching. Even I want to do first team, but. I know that you have to work your way up. So if I get a job like doing kids and then work my way up. I, I could never coach. I don't have the 
the patience. patience. I, I don't, especially like you touching it, the, the, the younger ones now. Yeah, hard. I, 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 like, I, I, well, I'll tell you that when I went into do the under 12s last year at Derby, mm. I loved it. Because obviously, I was a player at Derby. Yeah. When I walked in, the kids were buzzing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, do you know? I was like high fiving them, everything. Because then you've already got the like, respect, though. Yeah. But then when I went into the under 15s, yeah. I was like, all right, boys, they're like, Mm. Yeah. On their phones, sitting there, I was like, "Boys, come on!" They're like, "Yeah, no, like, give me." And then when I'm doing like stuff, like when with the when the other, with the under twelves, when I was speaking, they were like that, yeah. listening. When I was speaking to the under fifteens, two of them were over there kicking the ball. I'm like, "Lads, come on!" Like, two, and if they didn't like like the passing draw or something yeah. that I was doing, they they let you know about it, and and that's something you got to learn. Like, I ain't got I ain't got good patience. I've seen I've seen young ones now tell managers and coaches to shut up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I get mad when when I yeah, when I hear, you hear it. it. Yeah. No, I'm the same. And there has been sometimes when, but it's still a learning curve. So when that was happening to me when I was coaching the fifteen, the fifteens, the coach who was there were like looking at me laughing. I was like, "We laughing at?" He's like, yeah. "I can tell I'm angry again." I was <laughs> like, "How do you deal with it, man?" And he was like, "Just ignore him, because if you concentrate on that one person, all the rest, all the rest yeah. are thinking, oh, you're going to concentrate on him.' But he said, if you ignore him." And then concentrate on the rest. He's gonna feel left out, so mm. eventually he's gonna come. Out. And I was like, "Yeah, it's true. Like you do, it is learning curve, but it is hard, man." Mm. Best manager you played under? I've had so many managers, man. I don't know. I get asked this question a lot. I can't name. So the best manager who got the best out of me, who I've had the best season in my career, mm. Alex Neil, who's at Preston now. Is that when you was at Norwich? At Norwich, yeah. yeah. I, the best career, uh, best year of my career mm. at that Norwich, the year we got promoted. Um, but I've worked on some good men. I've always had Gary Rowett. I like him. Good manager. Mm. He's a good mate of mine as well. Stuart Gray for giving me my opportunity at Northampton. Chris Hewton. Mm. Good guy, man. I, I like him. I still like speak Chris to him now. I, I think Chris Hewton is, is so... I think he should be getting like, real top jobs. Oh, easily. Easy. I think he should be getting top jobs. Everywhere he's done, he's done well. Mm. Everywhere he's been, he's done well. And um, he's a, he's a nice man as well. I speak to him. I saw him at the um, Blacklist event. Yeah. yeah. So him, Steve McLaren, mm. good coach. Is he good coach? Unbelievable coach. It's like, I, don't, I just don't like Steve coach, McLaren, man. Good coach, but management wise, like yeah, not really. He had his 11, and that's what we cared about. Mm. So if you were playing for him, it was good. Yeah. And the way he wants you to play, like, I like playing football. Yeah. Like, I don't like all this long ball crap. Like, I like playing football, so he loves football, yeah. soccer. If if you got the ball, like for me, he played me defensive midfield, and he always used to say, you're the most important player in my team. Mm. You're the playmaker. So he's like, I want you to get off the goalkeeper. I want you to turn out and spread out wider. Mm. And if I was getting off the goalkeeper and getting tackled, he'd be like... Normally, manager, what the fuck are you doing? He'd be like, well done, keep going. If he yeah, can yeah. see you trying to do the yeah, right yeah. thing, he'd encourage it, and it was mm. always good. So when I played underneath him, I felt like a world beater. Mm. That was good. But I've had, so, uh, I've had so many managers, man. I couldn't name one like Paul Lambert. Good manager, man. It's so funny, like the ones you you say are, are, are good, man. Like... No, man, Paul Lambert, one of the, he, he, he would, he would, you couldn't get in his team for six months. Mm. But in every day in training, he'll have you running for a brick wall for him. Like his man management was a joke. Yeah. He was so good, like that. Getting you, getting players out for it. We were playing. Remember, it was our first year in the Premier League at Norwich. Mm. I think we finished like 13th or 12th underneath him. He, we were going to Arsenal, Man United, Man City, and he's like, "It's a myth. Don't care. You'll beat them. Like, mm. If they score three, you score four. I don't <laughs> care who you play. And that's and we were going out into the pitch believing you're thinking we're playing we're mm. playing Man U away. We're gonna beat them three 0 today. If like, you he, if you had to pick out sorry if you had to pick out a standout player though that you've played against against yeah easy and and this was in his he come out of retirement scores <sighs> easily come out of retirement. I'd, I would have loved to have played against him in his prime. Mm. That year he come back to Man U out of his retirement and we played him at Carrow Road. Could not get near him. I remember when um when that happened and I saw him on the team shit against City. Mm. Can you remember when he first came back against City? And everyone's like, what? He's laced his boots again. And then that game. Yeah. Controlled, controlled it. Controlled he, it. Yeah. You could not get near him. Mm. Like, I'm, I'm a centre midfielder, he's a centre midfielder. I could not get near him. Like, I'm thinking, oh right. Before the game, like even Paul Lambert was like, yeah. oh, who was it Paul Lambert the manager then? It might have been, or whoever it was was like. Can you just come out of retirement, get around him. He ain't got the legs and I'm thinking, yeah, yeah right, right. I'm gonna get they around him and rat him. 
space was his best friend. <laughs> Every time he got the ball, he had so much space and time on the ball. It was a joke. And obviously his passing was, was a joke. But yeah, um, oh, let's just wrap this one up now, man. Was there anything else I wanted to ask you? Oh, no, there was actually. The Moist Keen stuff. Oh, sub, sub. And Ferguson, yeah. I've been sub, sub. But, but has the manager put his arm around you and, or literally was yeah, that Yeah, I got sub, sub because we got a man sent. No, we got a man sent off. That's different. That's yeah, different. and it was my, yeah, come on. Then I got a man sent off and he brought me off. But it is, it is humiliated, but no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't agree with what Duncan Ferguson done, man. Let him yeah. walk down the tunnel like that by himself. Nah, at yeah, such right. a young age as well. Yeah. Nah, like, and then after that. the match, he's come out and said, um, it's got nice to do with his performance. Yeah. He just wanted to make a sub. And... Do you do that? You should have done that on the touchline there. Like, grab him, hug him, and mm. say that to him there. Because you know that what? That feel... would have killed all the... Yeah, everything. The... Yeah. But, yeah, I, don't, I didn't... I didn't, I didn't even watch that Man U game. I saw a match of the day and I was like, nah, I can't believe it. And then, oh, as you weird. said, when he walked past him, he didn't say mm. nothing to him, let him walk all the way down. And Old Trafford, it's not like the stadium, yeah, there's tunnels right there, he's walk. walking all the way down. Humiliating, man. But I felt I feel sorry for him. But oh, then, yeah, Duncan, I think he does too much anyway. And then, it'd be interesting to see what he does. Have they played a game since then? No. When was that? No, so that's, it'd be interesting to see yeah. what he does with him this next game, if he's on the bench or mm. if he's starting or... If he ain't even in the squad, because then you know it's a pack of lies. If he the good thing the is squad. though, it looks like Ancelotti is gonna go in there. I know An- Ancelotti will play him though. Hope so, yeah, anyway. he's had he's had it hard though. He's meant to be a good player, isn't he, Keane? Mm. But he, he ain't really done it. Um, has there been a move that you um, maybe not regret not taking, or has a team come in for you that you said no to that you think you know what I should look him back, or no, do you, have you really been lucky know. with the moves? Yeah, I've been lucky, really lucky. Mm. Yeah, I've not. You know what? I've not really. Apart from Norwich, is the only time I've moved when I've been in contract. Yeah. I've always, wherever I've been, I've always seen out my contract. Mm. So well, I was got, at Leeds. I signed years, four years at Leeds. I was there for four years. Then I went to Norwich. I signed three years there. Then I signed another oh, year, yeah, four I've years. Done this whole time. And then. Uh, Derby bought me and then I signed four years at Derby, spent all my four years there. Mm. And then now uh, I'm at Blackburn. Two years. The option of the third, is that your option Depending or their option? on how many games I play over the two years. Okay. Ah, they might get to a point when they're like, listen. And, that's, and, and that again, <laughs> and that happens. Yeah. Who, who do I know that happened to? Someone, if they played one more game, they would get another year. And yeah. then the club would be like, the people upstairs would be like, no, I don't play him. Yeah. And then you're thinking, like that that stuff does go on in football. Like contracts and, and stuff like that does go on and, and people don't see that side of it. So mm. that emotional side of it. And that's why I said they're the probably two hardest things. Not hardest thing because yeah. football, like I've always wanted to be a footballer. I'm lucky to be the position I am and I love my job. But that side of it, you don't really, when you're young, you don't expect it mm. to be like this. But it is what it is, man. It is what it is. Um, before you go... Um, Blackburn, you're gonna push for promotion. Oh, definitely. Push for yeah. promotion. Yeah, okay, so. when you're in London, I'm getting tickets. By the way, yeah, we've got if, London. If I ain't got a game. We'll see. We've got Brentford to play, Millwall to play. I live literally right next to Millwall. Who else? Who else? London. Fulham have played. Have you played? Did you play Charlton? No, no. Before? We've got Charlton to play away. Yeah, man. Charlton, man. Let me know. I'll do that, man. Cool. But yeah, guys, keep liking, subscribing, sharing. Um, yeah, that's about it, really. Get at us, hashtag counterattack podcast. Um, I'm going to put all these socials there. Just let us know what you think about this. Blackburn fans, Norwich fans, Leeds fans, Wolfham Forest fans. <laughs> but yeah, guys, we're out in a bit. <laughs>